What do we have here at uh, EAA Air Venture Oshkosh, Chris? Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's exciting. It's our first year here. Uh, we brought the Speeder P2, so that's our motorcycle ver shaped version. Um, we don't really like to think of it as a motorcycle, obviously, because it, it's an extremely fast flying speeder. Um, but uh, basically what we have is um, turbo jet engines um, configured on the, on the four corners that allow us to, to get extremely high power density out of a very small vehicle. Um, so with running diesel or Jet A1, um, that allows us to um, keep a very compact uh, vehicle with 600 pounds of payload um, that'll easily go um, well faster than you want to go with a person on there. Now, our goal is to move towards unmanned. Basically, the whole thing can be reconfigured to, to go completely unmanned just for cargo. And that's the majority of the use cases. This is a very special forces use case um, that they were asking for early on, but the majority of our customers want the unmanned cargo version. So um, could the unmanned one be used to rescue somebody, for example? Yeah, um, eventually, for sure. Um, the, the, the thrust capability is there, no problem. Um, a little bit of the, of the challenges there are putting a, putting a person on there that isn't a pilot that's that's about the the riskiest situation that you have and they're injured so um th that has to be a very specific use case but yes that's that we've been approached by multiple um military um apparatus that that want that to happen um and yeah eventually with with the right redundancies um we can we can make that happen no problem tell me a little bit about the technology i mean these are these are really small turbine engines basically yeah right? yeah basically just Small turbojet engines, um, typically used for missiles or small, small aircraft, um, unmanned typically, um, which is why a lot of the use cases we have are e easily go towards unmanned because um, there's no no regulatory requirements around a lot of those use cases. Uh, um, so we can easily enter into that market without having to worry about certifying these particular engines. And in fact, we use multiple brands of engines and we can get the same job done. So how much thrust does each of these engines put out? Uh, so they're about uh, 55 kilograms of thrust per engine. Okay. Whatever that is in pounds, 115, yeah. something like that, and 10. And, and uh, what about the control system? Are, are you using fly-by-wire like you used on your jetpacks? Um, well, this is even more um, self propelled than the jetpacks would be. The jetpacks are very manual. Um, this is all fly-by-wire, all uh, protected flight envelopes that this is flying in. Um, so you can't do, as a pilot, you can't do anything that will crash the vehicle. Um, it stays stable on its own. It does all of its own thinking to keep everything level. Um, all you have to do is say, I'd like to go forward. I'd like to go backwards. I'd like to go up. I'd like to go down. I'd like to go left. I'd like to go right. Um, very much like a DJI dr type drone or um, Xbox controller. Like if you've got any experience with that, I could just hand you the controller and you could, you could fly it today. So, and so how much flying has this thing done? Or the, the this whole series? This particular one? Or, or the whole series, actually. Um, in terms of hours, I'd say sub 100. You know, it's, it's, it doesn't take much to get it uh, you know, up and running. There's not, not a heck of a lot of, of time that it takes to go from concept to reality because of how much time we put into our simulation. Um, we put a lot of time into our simulation and make sure that's accurate to reality. And then by the time we get it into the real thing, th there have been times, like our second prototype took about a week to go from, from the simulation to flying fully controlled. Um, it absolutely accurate right out of the box, basically, because we got that simulation tuned. And then who's flying it? like? highly experienced test pilots or is it really easy to fly it? It's, I mean, it's a little bit of a mixed bag there. Like we have very experienced pilots in the company, but it doesn't take that to fly them. Like I personally, I don't have a pilot's license. Um, like I, I've never, never had any experience flying airplanes or helicopters, or anything like that. Um, but because I was in the development process the entire way, I learned what it took to fly the thing. And so now I'm, I'm the, basically the, the chief pilot for, for one of these things. But again, I don't have any experience with other vehicles. So it's very, very simple 
once we've got it tuned, again, it took a long time to get to where it's to where it's easy to fly, but I could hand it to anybody with any kid who's flown anything in an Xbox, I can just hand it to them and they, they'd be able to figure it out. So so tell me some of the performance numbers you're seeing. Yeah. So for this this vehicle, we've got about nine hundred pounds of thrust um, from all eight of these engines. Um, the the thing is a little heavy. This this prototype's a little heavy. Um, it's about 215 pounds ish, um, which we weren't focused on trying to get the the airframe light. We were just trying to focus on sort of the aesthetic and getting it flying. And we because we had so much extra thrust, we were we, we were given a lot of leeway when it when it came to the, um, the payload. Um, so yeah, it's we've got plenty of thrust to work with. Um, we, we typically say that something this size will, will do around 600 pounds of payload. Um, but it's a trade off too, as well. Like if you wanted more payload, you can put less fuel in it. If you want less payload and you want more range, but more fuel. So it's that, that trade off at that point. So what, how much fuel could it carry maximum? Um, this one's got a tank of about 35 gallon tank. Okay. Yeah. And then how far could that get you at what speed? Yeah. So they, there's a mixture there as well. So without a wing. Much, much shorter distance is probably around 50 miles or so with no wing. Um, but our, our real, real use cases are going to be adding that wing, getting the cargo pod on there. Then, then we can get around 200 miles uh, with that wing. Again, it's just like any other aircraft. you got a wing on there. That's doing most of the work. The engines don't have to produce the thrust that creates the lift. Rather, the wing will do that. And then you can you know, really reduce the thrust of the engines and get a lot more efficient um, on, on, your, on your travel. And then how fast can this go in this configuration? In a motorcycle configuration, we, we don't, we don't, we would probably limit the person to like, you know, 150, 200 miles an hour maximum because you don't want to rip off. Yeah. Um, the cargo mode, um, we're modeling right now, probably Mach 0.75. Wow. Yeah, pretty fast. Um, and again, that's, that's modeled numbers so far, but it's just like that. The math to do that is just airplane math. You know, it's not not rocket science at this point to like as long as this thing hovers and transitions correctly, we can get onto a wing no problem. And then at that point, you're just doing the math that that airplanes do to figure those speeds out. Yeah. So what's the market for this kind of product? Um, you yes. said cargo, but is it military mostly? Or? Yeah, a lot of military applications. You know, you're trying to get blood somewhere really quickly. Um, you want to get important information, um, important equipment to people. Um, if you have very condensed environments, you know, where you want to store it in the back of a Humvee or something, or you want to land it on a small Navy ship, you want to go from ship to ship, you know, rather than bringing two ships close together or getting a helicopter involved in a, in a oh, they just need to get a small part from one ship to another or ship to shore or shore to ship. You don't need to get a helicopter involved and you don't want to use a small electric drone. There's a huge gap in the, in the market between small electric drones and helicopters, but right. size-wise and speed-wise and payload-wise, there's a big hole in that market, and that's where we fill that. So we're not necessarily taking the place of either electric drones or motor uh, or helicopters. We're we're kind of reinventing how you could think about logistics. Like, oh, normally we wouldn't even send anything because it's a five-pound part. We'll just wait, or we'll do without, or whatever. But now if you've got this. There's no risk to anybody. You can send that part. You can get job done easier, faster, whatever, with nobody at risk. Um, other applications include, you know, distributing, you know, in a, in a war situation, you got a $20 million helicopter with four crew members on board. They're a big target, you know, but if you can take that, that money that you were going to spend on a helicopter and split it up into 40 speeders, and then you distribute that so that that can't get shot down. Maybe one or two of them can get shot down, but the other 38, you know, survive. Um, it really opens up like how you, how you can defend a country, you know? So right now, is it operating basically in the ultralight category? Um, right now, yeah, we're working very closely with the FAA to define exactly like what, what category this falls under. Um, we're, we're dealing with experimental category at the moment. Um, our, our local FISDO helped um, bring the, the Reaper to market, um, or the, yeah, the, the Reaper drone, 
because that was the first time that anybody ever like, oh, unmanned aircraft, what do we do with that? Um, so those guys are great. We're working very closely with them to define, you know, because it's got jet engines. It's like, oh, do you need to be like, do you need to have a jet certification of the pilot? Like, what does the pilot look like? So we're working with them on that going, hey, like, it's pretty simple. You don't really need, you don't really need this, you know, this degree of pilot's licensing to fly this thing. Um, so that's still in the works, honestly, at the moment. Um, but we're working very closely with them to, de to define that better. But the markets that we're in at the moment are extremely easy to get into, um, even without figuring that out. Um, from the military, they're, if the military likes what, you're, what you've got going on, they're like, we'll figure it out. Just give us some and we'll figure it out. So what's it like to fly? I mean, we don't have much points of comparison to regular aircraft, obviously. But yeah. It's fun. I would, oh, it's, it's very fun. I would compare it to like an air hockey puck more than anything else because it can just, it's so free to go in any direction and it's so fast. It'll just slip in one direction extremely quickly. It's extremely quick to accelerate, extremely quick to stop. I mean, if, yeah, if you've ever seen an air hockey game, it just, just starts flying in this one direction, then it'll stop, you know, um, very much like that. And can you go in any direction? Yeah, you can go in any direction. It's, I mean, you could just go sideways. The, the vehicle is going backwards just as fast as it's going forwards. Um, now, when you add a wing on there, you know, you're not going to be able to do that kind of thing. But without the wing, it's free to move in any direction extremely quickly. So here at Oshkosh, I bet a lot of people are saying, hey, can I buy one? Yeah, yeah, a lot of people ask to buy it. Um, again, we're kind of distracting people with this, you know, the speeder ride-on version. Uh, but our, our real market is that unmanned side of things, you know, with, with the military, with oil rigs, with firefighting, um, police departments, um, you know, organ, you know, transfer that kind of thing just like really critical situations like that um so we're, we're really not selling it to the general public at the moment although people come up and you know wave money in our face all the time like i'd like one please and we're like well we we're not really <laughs> you know releasing this into the public yet this is obviously a big potential product is uh Maiman still working on jetpacks as well um, I, I don't say, I, I wouldn't say we're working on them. We still have them. We still know how to build them every once in a great while. Somebody will come along and like, they will want to combine that knowledge with something else. Um, and so we're still open to that kind of thing. Um, because it, it really opens up some very specific special forces kind of doors. Um, but we, we spend all of our resources and all of our time on the speeder at the moment, but yeah, we still keep that in our back pocket because it's a legacy thing. We all love it. We all enjoy it, you know? Um, and, and again, it's, it really does, it gives us some credibility in regard to like, we know how to, how to make very small, very unique aircraft that do extremely high speeds, um, in a very compact package. Um, so it sort of sparks people's imagination sometime as this does with like, Hey, actually, can you do this configuration? Cause I've got a very specific use case in mind. Um, so, yeah, we we're very we've got all sorts of ideas and all sorts of products that that we still keep in the back of our mind. But at the moment, we're very laser focused on like very specific customers. So, does flying this make you want to get a airplane or helicopter license eventually? You know, I I'd say no because I I have so much freedom, all the degrees of freedom that I have with this, and I'm just like, man, nothing else is like this. You know, David loves his helicopter. He loves airplanes. Um, and you know, we fly around in those every once in a while. And I'm just like, well, this is just slow in comparison to the, what I was flying yesterday. Um, and I, I personally enjoy the unmanned side of things a lot more because there's just so much potential in that. Um, that that's, that's kind of where my passion is. Uh, it's on the unmanned side, although I'll climb on this thing any day. You know? <laughs> so where are you doing all the flight testing? I'm California at the moment. Yeah. We're, um, we're in Ventura. And we're actually looking to relocate down to Long Beach. Um, we do all our flight testing at a private facility in um, near Ventura. And then um, we're looking at some other opportunities with the military and then with other agencies that sort of have more freedom to uh, lock off their own airspace and allow us to test. Um, stuff that I won't get into, but. Chris, thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me.